Želite li da postanete astronaut? Jedna od iznenađujući teških stvari koje ćete morati da savladate je kako da obavljate nuždu u svemiru. Kao što možete da zamislite, to je jedan komplikovan proces kada se nalazite u bestižinskom stanju, pa trening počinje mnogo pre nego što se vežete i odletite u svemir. Naravno, to je let u svemirskoj stanici izgleda potpuno drugačije od onog na koji ste navikli. Mi vam otkrivamo šta se sve tamo nalazi. Hello and welcome to the toilet of the International Space Station. Let's say you're up here on ISS and you need to go to the restroom. You want to come to this cabin and the first thing you want to do is grab this piece of equipment and turn this rotor switch 90 degrees to the open position. What that does is it turns on a fan which creates a suction effect in this hose so that you can use this yellow element for your number one. For number two, the principle is actually exactly the same, suction. We have a solid waste container here and on top of it is this uh, seat. Uh, and the solid waste container is connected via this hose to the same fan so that, again, the same suction effects allows you to do your number two in weightlessness. I want to show you how it looks, but since we don't want any bad smells uh, to come out, we're going to actually turn on the fan. It's going to be a little bit loud. There we go. Now you can lift the lid. There is this uh, seat that sort of looks comfortable, but you don't really see it in, in, sit in weightlessness. So uh, most of us actually prefer to lift this one as well and use directly the, the opening that goes into the bag. And in fact, there is a bag in, in there. It looks like this. And uh, when we are done with our business, we close the bag and we push it down into the solid waste container. And then, of course, as a courtesy to the next person, we put a new fresh bag inside. The um, solid waste container gets changed when it's full, which is roughly every 10 days for a crew of three people using it. Uh, this one, for example, was installed on uh, the 61st day of this year. So probably roughly around day 71, we will have to change it again. Um, but urine gets recycled. So, from uh, the pretty complicated hydraulic equipment that is behind here and makes the use of the toilet in space possible, the urine actually gets directly transferred to another piece of equipment which is here in the floor, which is called UPA, Urine Processing Assembly, which is the first step into turning urine into potable water. Znamo da u svemiru tekuća voda nije uobičajena pojava, ali nemojte da mislite da astronauti ne vode računa o higijeni kada su mesecima na misijama. Kako se astronauti kupaju, kako peru zube, zašto koriste sapun koji ne peni, sve je drugačije. Na kraju nećete verovati kako se voda ponaša u svemiru. Hello! and welcome to my hygiene corner here on the ISS. This is the place where I wash, brush my teeth, or after workouts, take a shower ISS style. The heart of the um, hygiene corner is the toiletry pouch, Comfort 1M. It's Russian made and uh, most crew members ask to have one sent up for them. Uh, it's really useful to um, deploy our hygiene items and hygiene items come, come up in a ziplock like this one. This contains supplies that need to last for six months. And they don't look much different from what uh, your hygiene items look in your bathroom probably. Uh, you can see a toothbrush here, toothpaste tube, deodorant. And as far as towels are concerned, we cannot wash stuff up here. So um, we get a supply of towels. Uh, every week we get a towel like this one and a smaller washcloth. I usually take my new ones out on Sundays, so it's not quite time yet. I put those back and uh, 
for today, I will use the ones that I have already deployed for the week. Every second day, we can also take out a new, um, let's say, camping towel. It's one of those uh, light towels. It comes in a foil like this, it's dry. And then we can add water, wet it, and it, it's really nice to, to clean your skin. In terms of uh, brushing your teeth, it's actually um, very similar to what you would do on Earth. As I said, uh, toothbrush and toothpaste look just the same, and you brush your teeth just the same. Uh, the only difference, of course, is that we don't have a sink to spit in when we're done um, all that extra toothpaste. So some uh, astronauts uh, just swallow it. Um, it's quick and, and easy. Um, I personally don't like to do that, so I actually spit it in a towel. Um, it's not the most elegant thing, but uh, you have to do what you have to do. As far as soap is concerned, it comes up uh, in, in pouches like this one. You need to add water, and then you get a nice uh, liquid soap pouch which needs to last for about two weeks and it's a no rinse type of soap it doesn't make a lot of foam and it doesn't really need to be rinsed and of course we do not have any running water up here so we also need to fill up uh, water pouches uh, we can connect pouches like this one to the water dispenser which is in the nearby module in the US lab and uh, I personally like to to fill it up with warm water when it's time to wash, but uh, you can also fill it up with ambient temperature water. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do this right now and I'll see you in a minute. Here I am and I got my water. So first of all, I'd like to show you um, how water behaves in weightlessness, which is kind of uh, interesting. Uh, of course, it doesn't fall down um, like it does on Earth. And it kind of tends to stick to your skin because of surface tension. if you can see it. You see, it doesn't really want to move away from your hand. It's just because of that surface tension effect. Now, of course, I put a lot of water on my hand just to show you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't use all that water to wash um, just because it's, it's a little bit difficult to control. So I'm actually going to dry it off. But if you have some time um, to be, you know, to, to take your time and be careful, you can, you can do that, I think. Um, I do it sometimes. I, I really put some water on my skin like that, you know, just a little bit. And, um, and then I add some soap. And you can carefully go ahead and rub it. And it actually really gives you a nice feeling of, uh, of cleanliness. And then as I said, I like to keep my actual towels here dry so I can use them to, to dry off. Now, of course, you, you don't always have the time to take it slowly and be so careful. So if you're a little bit more in a rush, let's say it's a, it's, a, it's a work day and you had your workout and then you have to rush off and do something else, then you will simply, um, you know, just squirt the water into your camping towel and add some soap and that's a lot easier to control because you can just rub your skin like that. And uh, it, I don't find it as pleasant, but uh, it's certainly a lot quicker and, and, easier, to, and easier to control. Now, all the, the water that you use eventually ends up in the towels that you use to dry. And we leave uh, those towels close to a ventilation grid, like in this case you can see a ventilation grid right here, so that they can dry off. And all the water then is uh, recuperated. Um, it evaporates in the air and then in the um, air conditioning system it condensates again and it goes into our uh, uh, water recuperation bus and it actually gets turned into potable water again. So we don't absolutely lose any of the water that we use to wash. Cutting your fingernails is not the easiest thing in, uh, in weightlessness. 
maintenance. Of course, you, um, you don't want to lose any pieces of nails uh, around the cabin. So um, the best thing is actually to do it really close to a um, return grid of the ventilation system so that uh, all the pieces of nails that you cut off um, get immediately attracted, um, sucked towards the grid, um, kind of like this. And then when you're done, of course, you want to have uh, a vacuum cleaner handy so that you can uh, clean after yourself. And to um, wash your hair, um, we have a, a special no-rinse shampoo uh, that requires uh, um, theoretically no rinsing, but at least very little rinsing. So we just squirt uh, water into our hair, uh, we add some shampoo, uh, we massage it just like we would on earth, and then we kind of dry the excess water and shampoo off with, uh, with a towel and, uh, and off we go. Lepo je kada se nakon napornog dana bacite u svoj mekani krevet, sila zemljine teže odradi svoje, pa utonete u jastuk i prepustite se snovima. Ali šta se dešava kada nema sila zemljine teže? Za astronaute ne postoji ni gore ni dole, stalno su negde između i plutaju po svemirskoj stanici. U takvim uslovima postoji mogućnost da neprestano udaraju o razne stvari tokom spavanja. Da bi to izbegli, oni pričvršćuju svoje specijalno dizajnirane vreće za spavanje za zid ili pod. Ali bestežinsko stanje nije jedini problem sa kojim se susreću. U svemirskoj stanici dani i noć se menjaju svaki 45 minuta, a svi znamo koliko nam smetaju sunčevi zraci čim prodru u našu sobu. Kako i gde se astronauti kriju od sunca? Hello, it's uh, almost time to go to sleep here on ISS, so I thought I would show you where we actually sleep. Four of us sleep here in Node 2, and uh, two more crew members have their sleeping stations in, uh, in the Russian segment. We have uh, two crew quarters on the walls, so to speak. One is up there on the ceiling, and my own is down here on the floor. But of course, it doesn't really matter. There is no up and down in space. It's just a convention. We talk about overhead, deck, port, and starboard crew quarters. As I said, it's past midnight. I'm already in my pajamas and it's time to turn off the light and go to sleep. Come on, I'll give you a tour. As you can see, there isn't a whole lot of space in here. Um, it's really just a space for for our sleeping bag and for us to sleep, uh, and then for a few personal items and stuff of, uh, of regular use. Um, most importantly, we have two laptops in here. Um, this is one of uh, many laptops that we have throughout station called SSCs. Uh, each one of us has a personal SSC in their uh, crew quarters. We can use it to read our emails, um, but also, for example, to pull up stuff like our um, electronic uh, agenda, the electronic schedule, where we can see, um, for example, I can take a look and see what activities I will be doing tomorrow, and if I want I can um, look in detail, pull up all the information about each activity. Uh, but there's also on these computers um, applications that are more for our personal life up here, like for example there is an application that allows us to use the a voice over IP system to uh, talk on the phone, so to speak, with um, anybody on the planet. So we can uh, call our friends and family that way and we usually do that here in our crew quarters. And we also have a, a second laptop which is called a CSL laptop and uh, this one is uh, disconnected from the onboard uh, network and with this one we can uh, log in into a machine on the ground and uh, this way have access to the internet. It's uh, not super fast and of course it's subject to interruptions depending on the satellite coverage but it's kind of a neat thing to have to be able to have access to the internet from the space station and then I have a few you know personal common use items in here I have my, my clothes um, the sport clothes and the, and the regular clothes that I have been that I've been wearing this uh, this week um, my personal camera my iPad some snacks uh, water a flashlight can come in handy. Um, we also all have a speaker in the crew quarters that only transmits uh, an alarm in case of an emergency in the space station. And of course we have our sleeping bag. I usually roll it up during the day so that it's not in my way and then when it's time to sleep I open it up 
and then I can slide in. Some people leave it open, but I'm, uh, I'm always a little bit cold, so I like to zip it up <coughs> all the way. Some people like to um, tie themselves, but uh, I actually don't. I really like to just float when I'm sleeping. So that's really it. I would uh, turn the light off and uh, good night.